Ever have one of those desserts that goes on and on and on, and you wonder what happened to your life? Where did it all go? You spent all day making this dessert. This one is really worth it. Okay, our ingredients for this are gonna be 230 grams or one and three quarters cup flour, 125 grams or four and a half ounces of butter, as you can see a little bit more than one stick, 50 grams, which is a heaping one third cup of confectioner's sugar. And in this bowl, I've got one egg yolk and two tablespoons of the whole milk mixed together. And what we are going to do is chop our butter into little squares. And the way I like to do this is, this is actually straight out of the refrigerator. So just come along and cut it up like that as best you can. And there's the kitty contributing to today's episode. And this is all going to go in our mixer with our paddle attachment. And we will put in our flour. And we're going to mix this until we get the consistency of fine breadcrumbs and the butter and the flour is sort of incorporated in there. A lot of people express this as um, the butter sort of making peas with the flour. But uh, basically mix it all up. Here comes Mr. Noisy. Oh, God. Okay, so you can see how the butter has really been incorporated here. And this took, um, I don't know, maybe two or three minutes with fairly firm butter. So the next thing we're going to do is add our confectioner sugar. Just to get it incorporated. And now we're just going to do our eggs and two tablespoons of milk just for a little bit. If we go too long, it'll get tough. Okay, so here's what our dough looks like. It's a little bit you know, slightly moist, uh, kind of crumbly. We're going to gather it all together here into a ball. And we're really trying to not overwork this short crust too much. I'm doing this in, what am I doing this? I'm doing this in April. If you were doing this in the summer, you might want to do it early in the day, whatever. And I'm just putting it between some parchment paper. Ah, oh, it's so crinkly and annoying, isn't that? Oh. And I'm trying to get it to about a quarter inch. And you can see it's taking some effort to do all of this. You could use one of those rollers with the spacers to get it to exactly an even thing. I just decided not to do that. But so now what we're going to do is take this. Uh, put it on a plate and stick it in the freezer for at least an hour. I usually try and go for about two or three. All right, so our dough has been in the um, refrigerator for about an hour and a half. I did have to roll it out a little bit more, which is difficult when it's uh, been sitting in there. It fights you the whole way. And what we're going to do is uh, I have my pie tin here, tart pan. And it is a loose bottom tart pan. And I have greased it and floured it. I know that some people only do that sometimes, or some use the nonstick. Um, I like to grease and flour every single time. So we are going to get this in the tart pan, and hopefully it'll come out OK. And there's the cat giving her contribution on the entire affair. And it takes some maneuvering, especially with these square tart pans to get it all in there the right way and everything. Got the dough in here and I've overhung it a little bit all around the sides so that it doesn't fall down when we bake it. 
And we've got our parchment paper that's been hanging around here. And I don't really like to waste this stuff. So I'm going to come along and crinkle, crinkle, crinkle. Cut it. And you're going a little bit bigger than the pan. And we're going to put in our beans. I've baked so many pies with these beans, I am sure they would be quite disgusting if I ever actually made anything with them. A big thing to do here is you're trying to keep your walls from collapsing. So you really want to make sure you get them up into those corners there. I find that those walls fall down and ruin your crust a lot more than the bottom starts puffing up. So get it in there about like this. Try and make sure that there's no huge gaps between your parchment paper and your tin. So I'm really trying to smush them in there. And we are going to um, do what's known as blind baking. So we are going to pre-bake. I don't know why it's not called pre-baking. That kind of makes a lot more sense, but you know, just to keep it tricky. We are going to bake it for 20 minutes at 350 degrees. Okay, so our crust is baked for 20 minutes. And we are going to now try to not spill this everywhere. Take these beans out. And the bottom is still a little bit soft, so hit it with the fork a little so it doesn't puff up. Now we're going to put it back in the oven for probably another five to ten minutes, checking at five minutes to see that the bottom is uh, drying out some. Okay, so now we are going to make the frangipan, which is uh, sort of like an almond custard sort of buttered thing that's uh, really delicious and is going to sit as the bottom layer within our um, tart. So we have... 75 grams, oops, sorry, 75 grams, or a third of a cup of butter at room temperature. This is pretty important. You want to take time to warm it up. But since you're waiting for your pie crust to chill, uh, you got plenty of time to do that. Then we also have six tablespoons, 75 grams of super fine caster sugar. This is a baking sugar. It is not just like regular sugar. It's super fine, but not confectioner's sugar. You can find it in the baking aisle pretty easily. Then we have 35 grams of ground hazelnuts. That's about one and a quarter ounces. And then we have 40 grams or one and a half ounces of ground almonds. All right, so into our mixer goes our sugar and our butter. We have the paddle attachment on there. And we are going to mix that up until it's all creamed together. About a minute. There's our creamed butter and sugar. Okay, so now we're going to add our nuts and eggs to the butter and sugar mix. And we're going to do it in three consecutive bursts as the mixer is going. So whip it on. Crust is uh, all done. It has a nice baked bottom, slightly brown. Uh, to be honest, I actually had to leave this in for a solid 15 minutes longer. So it's basically pretty much 20 minutes with uh, the beans and then 20 minutes without. And then after that, cool it all down. And now we have our frangipan that we're going to go ahead and put in there. It's all, you can't put this in too early because if you do, the crust will still be too warm and just melt all the butter around in it. And that's not really what we want here. So we're trying to get a nice smooth coat of this. 
all over the pie crust. And we're not trying to fill it all the way. We're trying to just get sort of a, a nice little base there. And as you can tell, this is like a pretty, the walls don't come up that high. So you don't need that much. A little bit goes a long way with this here. But yeah, there we go. That's about it. And now we are ready to start doing our apple roses. This is where the fun begins and the time really gets sucked down. So I'll see you back there for that. All right, so now we are ready to start actually getting to the apple part of this. And this is where the fun really begins. So I have five varieties of apples here. Uh, it is extremely important to use a variety of them. You do not want to use all the same apple. I actually find that the Green Granny Smiths do not work the best here, but you know they work okay. They don't give the best color. The Red Delicious gives a great color. The Honeycrisp does. Um, the Gala apples do too. And oddly, they all kind of give their own distinct color, which is what we want here. We will start by using one of my most hated tools. I always feel like I'm going to lose a finger with this thing. I don't know why. But we're going to use the apple corer and come right in here and try and avoid stabbing yourself and core that apple. So, yes, can it core an arrow? Apple? Yes, it can, chef of the future. God, it's so old. Anybody who understands that one or gets it. Once again, can it core an apple? Yes, it can, chef of the future. Huh. Leave a note in the comments if you know what that's from. Do not core all your apples to start. Just do maybe one or two. Then we're going to cut, cut it in half lengthwise. And take a look. Sometimes these uh, cores don't exactly get everything, or you go in crooked or something like that. But uh, the reason why we're not doing them all at once is because they will go brown quite rapidly if you do that. So now we've got them cut lengthwise. The next thing to do is slice them extremely thin. You want to be slicing these uh, about a sixteenth of an inch thick, so you will need your sharpest knife. If you do not have a very sharp knife, this won't work at all. And we are going to be leaving the skins on, so just come along and try and get as thin a cut as you can. And you can see that's about uh, between a sixteenth of an, and an eighteenth of an inch. Almost see-through. Or see-through is okay. And once you have one or two apples sliced up, we are going to take those and put those into some simmering water. Okay, so we have our apples in our simmering water. This is, you know, just a small saucepan with uh, maybe one or two tablespoons of lemon juice to keep the apples from getting all brown. And you leave them in for one or two minutes. Take them out. Put them in some cool water, again with the lemon juice. And you can tell when they are done, when they're pliable. And basically what you want to be able to do is roll them up. Roll them up like that. Now, they should be pretty, pretty, well, they should leave you quite limp, actually. All right, so we have our apple slices. Uh, this is about, I don't know, one or two apples worth. And we lay them all out here. And you kind of want to get close to the same size or larger on the left and smaller on the right, you know, a descending amount. And overlap them by about half. This isn't the most precise thing in the world. Yeah, that's what, that one's a little big. All right. I like to line up a bunch of them. 
that can sort of work on several flowers at once. Well, get several done at once, I suppose. And you can see, like, I'm, I'm trying to sort of just pick, pick them out and size them, you know, as I go. That's why I'm doing, like, several strips here. And there's some smaller ones. Click on that. That one's going to be a little difficult. You want to just keep going and kind of use them all up and get it all done as quickly as you can because these things do start to brown even with the lemon juice. And while I'm doing this, I do have more sitting in the um, in the water to steam. So let's come along here and start to roll them up. So since I have the big ones on the left and the little ones on the right, these will be bigger in the middle and sort of poke through more like a newborn rose. And you can see sort of how that looks. It's very difficult to hold without it falling apart. And I'm gonna just stick that down here at random in here. Another aspect of this is you wanna place them pretty randomly. So again, I'm rolling and rolling. Uh, okay, you're gonna mess some of these up. That's why you have to have tons of apples to do this. And stick that one there. You kind of don't want to stick the really big ones into the corner. So I'm going to do a small one here. This just has three slices on it. Okay. And here we go. Sloppy rolling. Uh, so smaller ones can go in the corner really nicely. Uh, and these could have stayed in the water a little bit, but you get kind of a rhythm of doing all of these and sticking them all in there. See, by the time I'm done with this, the ones that are in the steaming water or the simmering water are probably going to be done. And so I can just keep going. There's no stopping it. Okay, so I've got some in there. They're very random. Let's rotate it so the next time around it's also random. And you can see it's been going along a little bit. This is about, I don't know, 15 minutes later. Basically, slice an apple, one apple, put it in the hot water, take the apple out of the cold water, start rolling it up. By the time that's done, the apple's in the hot water, ready to go in the cold water, and you just sort of build up a cycle. Ready to pour the next apple. And that's what it really is, is trying to work out a rhythm with the whole thing, an endless rhythm where your life has no meaning. How long have I been doing this? How long will I do it for? I don't know. Time ebbs and flows. A constant stream of the ridiculous. So, more apples. Endlessly rolling apples. Nope. Well, See, that one wasn't done enough, so too thick, actually. But we can keep going and keep rolling. It is so tedious. And rolling some more. Give you time to think about things. Where you are in life. What meaning it has. Why are you doing this? I don't know. I don't know. It's all for the craft of cooking. But it is a really nice dessert to show people that you care. As time melts into nothingness, your existence becomes nothing but an apple. Your mind is a blank. This is all that is in your world right now, is rolling up apples. 
How long will it go for? First, it seems like you're getting so much done. And you start looking at it and you're like, oh my god, no. I have endless apples to do. The eons drag on and on. Rolling and rolling our apples. You see how this gets to be kind of a little bit of a Zen thing. I don't know. It's half Zen, half Robert De Niro and Taxi Driver. You just feel like he's sitting there watching the TV on the milk crate. You can really identify it after a certain amount of time rolling these things up. Patiently taking our time with each one as our own existence fades away into nothingness. I think I've been at this now for, oh, I don't know, close to 40 minutes here. Rolling and rolling. More rolling. You got a fast car. I got no laughs on making this tart. I have no existence. Try something else and make a new start. And ah ha ha. Used to be someone, be someone. But now I'm rolling apples. Where did I go wrong? Should have gone to law school, but I didn't. Ah, oh, it's looking beautiful. Just stunning. Okay, you can see it's coming together, but still more to do. More roses to roll up. And at this point, I'm sort of, you know, anybody gets tired of this after a while. Let's see, I have been at this for oh, about 40 minutes of rolling these things up. Get a little bit silly with it. I made the tart rose, but I didn't make no dinner plan. I rolled the tart rose. It could be mac and cheese again. I don't know. It's a lot of time, but you have to enjoy it, just like I enjoy it. Hope you enjoy watching it. Next! A third of a cup of water, a quarter cup of our fine sugar, and a half teaspoon of cinnamon. We're going to heat this up and make a syrup on the stove. Okay, so we've boiled our, uh, we've boiled our water, sugar, and cinnamon until it's reduced just a little bit, not much. Maybe, I don't know, boiled it for about five or six minutes, something like that. And we're going to let that cool a little bit. We're going to let it cool for another five minutes just sitting here on the counter. And now that our... Syrup has cooled down for about five minutes. We are going to brush it across the top carefully. And you can see it's, you know, not crazy thick, but not crazy thin. And the idea here is this is going to sort of caramelize the roses a little bit in the oven because we get to bake this again. Can you believe it? Yes, you can, because this is the dessert that goes on forever. But you really feel, I don't know, very pro doing it. Because the nice thing about this is, is you bring this anywhere, and people are going to be very impressed. Although, this does take a certain amount of skill, and it certainly takes time. This is not something, I don't even think, I don't even think you can go to the grocery store, get the stuff and come back and do this. You have to have the, do the grocery the night before or whatever. You know, this is one of those where you, you want to wake up and start doing it and getting it out of the way. All right. That looks pretty good. So, you know, you're not going to believe this, but guess what we're doing now? This is going in the refrigerator for an hour. That's right. It's going to be an hour in the refrigerator with this. And um, then we get to come back and do more. It's going to be great. Okay. So our tart has been in the refrigerator for an hour. We have our oven preheated to 325 degrees. 
And we're just going to take a little bit more of our super fine baker's sugar and do a little dusting over the top here. And what this is going to help do is uh, sort of, again, caramelize the tops of the roses a little bit more, which is always kind of nice. I'm just putting on a little bit here. No real measured amount. And we're going to put it in the oven after wrapping with the tinfoil. Almost forgot about that. This helps really kind of keep the flavor and everything in there. And the apples cook up, cook up a lot more nicely with the foil on it. It does obviously, though, add substantially to the baking time. So, 325 degrees, we're going to check it after an hour, but we're probably going to go a solid two. Okay, and we are finally done. Um, this went a solid two hours. Uh, the last 20 minutes, I took off the tinfoil to get a little bit of browning on the top of the roses, then let it sit, and after 15 minutes, sprinkled it with a little bit of confectioner sugar. Uh, might want to wait a full half hour before taking it out of the tin, but, um, this was a pretty much all day product and it was a lot of fun and I hope you like it. Thanks for watching. The gadgetry. I just wanted to go over a couple of things that I used in this video. One you might've noticed is the, um, tart pan. This is a rectangular one, not the square one that I actually used. Uh, I prefer these silver ones just because they're tin lined and there's no, um, uh, Teflon or any coating like that to come rubbing off. The thing of it is, is these edges here are razor sharp. So you have to be very careful when washing them. And when you do wash them, you cannot wash them in the dishwasher. Never wash any pie tins in the dishwasher. Uh, these especially, you have to hand wash them. And when you're done hand washing them, uh, you should probably dry them as well. Uh, if you wash them in the dishwasher, they will instantly rust and they'll essentially be ruined. The other thing is a little scale. Uh, I don't know, these things are like 25 bucks. Uh, if you're gonna be doing this kind of thing at all seriously, you really need one of these things. And they're just so much easier than going through all the um, measuring cups and that kind of thing and trying to estimate like a third of a cup and a t plus a tablespoon of sugar. Who wants to do that? Uh, so I, I was really hesitant to get one of these scales and I got one like several years back and it just saves so much time. So again, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it.